Hello students, so I am here to discuss the next session of IUQP and today I am going to discuss what is called as catenary. So let me show you the flow of the session for today. So first I am going to mention the name of the students who have sent me the solution for the previous teaser. Then I am going to show you the solution for the previous teaser that I gave. Then I am going to show you the question that we are, that we are going to solve today. And then we are going to solve that question and then I am going to give you the teaser for the next, uh, for, for this week. All right, so let's get started. So first of all, I would like to congratulate Tushar, Tanish, and Shikhar. They have sent me the solutions for the previous teaser and they have got all the answers correct and uh, the solutions were also correct. So well done. Keep it up, guys, and keep sending us the solution. We really love to get such solutions from you guys. All right, now what was the last teaser? So this was the question that was given in the last teaser. If you are looking at this question for the first time, you can pause the video here and uh, you can attempt this question. I will now show you the answer to this question. So these are the answers to this question. For the part C of this question, two answers have been given. The two answers corresponding to, uh, corresponds to two kinds of interpretation that this question may have. All right, I'll talk about those interpretations when I solve this question. So let's get started. So the first part of the question talks about the time for which the force was acting and in, for this particular uh, question the data that is given I'm writing it here the force is given to be 6 Newton m1 is given to be 1 kg m2 is given to be 2 kg then displacement of m1 was given to be 0 0.1 meter displacement of 2 was given to be 0 0.05 meter we were also given the kinetic energy of the system in the center of mass frame that was given to be 0 0.1 joule now we have been asked the time for which this force acted uh, let's see how we can address this question so for this i'm going to write the displacement of the center of mass in two ways one of the ways to write displacement of the center of mass is half acm into t square of course we can use this method or we can write displacement of center of mass in this manner when acceleration of center of mass is a constant which happens to be the case because uh, a constant force is acting which is 6 newton the mass of, of the system is 3 kg and t square so we end up getting t square as displacement of center of mass let me call this as equation number one now there is another way of writing the displacement of center of mass and that way is that way is m1 into delta x1 plus m2 into delta x2 divided by m1 plus m2 so if i use this method i'm going to write 1 into 0.1 plus 2 into 0 0.05 divided by 3 so this turns out to be 0 0.2 by 3 or 1 upon 15 so equating 1 and 2 we are going to get the value of t if I equate these two, I will be writing t square as 1 upon 15, which means I would be writing t as 1 root 1 upon root 15, which is approximately 0 0.26 seconds. So that will be the answer to the part A. And here it is given. If you want to obtain the answer in this form, instead of substituting the number, work with the alphabets and you will get that form. Okay, now the question, uh, B part of the question talks about the velocity of center of mass. Again, that's pretty easy to calculate. We can simply do ACM into T. We calculated ACM as 2. We did it here. So this ratio is ACM. It is 2. And then into T. T is this value. So this turns out to be 0 0.52 seconds. Uh, again, this is given here. Okay. And we want to write the kinetic energy of center of mass. Now, what does it mean? Kinetic energy of center of mass. So if we consider the center of mass to be present here, it is moving with some speed. Let's call it as Vcm. If we consider the entire mass to be concentrated here, then what is the kinetic energy that we are going to write? That is what we are trying to write here. So half into total mass into Vcm square, which is like 2 by root 15. So square of this. So we end up writing 3 by 2 into 4 by 15, which is like uh, 0.4 joule. So this is, these two are the answer to part B of the problem. All right. And we can check here. It is given to be these two numbers. Now regarding part C of the problem, two answers are given. The two answers are 0 0.1 Joule and 0 0.6 Joule. Let's try to understand 
why two answers were accepted so the third part said energy stored in the system now one may interpret this phrase energy stored in the system as the sum of kinetic energy of the blocks plus the potential energy stored in the spring some other may interpret it as the energy stored in spring only so this part this answer tells you the kinetic energy plus the energy stored in the spring and this part tells you the energy stored in the spring okay let's check how we can calculate these numbers so if i want to calculate uh, this value that means if i want to write the total kinetic energy of the blocks in the ground frame plus the energy stored in the spring well all of this energy comes from where the external agent the external force so we can simply write that it work done by the external agent will give us the total energy stored in the system and that would be f into delta x1 so that would be 6 into 0.1 so this answer is one of the answers that was accepted now to get the other answer what we can do we can write kinetic energy of two particle system okay in ground frame this can be written as kinetic energy of system in center of mass frame plus kinetic energy of center of mass in ground frame now i'm not writing this by just by logic or by giving some argument uh, this can be derived you know this part this part we uh, get this part as half into m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 into the relative velocity of the two particles square plus half into total mass into vcm square so this part is equal to this and this part is equal to this now this is a very interesting way of writing the kinetic energy of a two particle system we will not be using this particular this particular thing okay in in solving this question but it is a very useful result to remember i'll tell you what is the utility of the result uh, this part is frame independent okay from whichever frame you measure the relative velocity of two particles with respect to each other you get the same value so this part is frame independent and this part is frame dependent so we have discovered a way of writing kinetic energy of a two particle system uh, by splitting it into two terms one of the term is frame independent the other of the the other term is frame dependent so if ever you change the frame and you check the kinetic energy of the same two particles you will find that this part is not changing and only this part is changing so what's so significant about this think about this if i ask you that uh, what is the minimum value of kinetic energy that i can find uh, for a given two particle system if i keep changing the frames okay then the answer would be this part and if i ask you that from where should i observe to from where should i observe the two particle system so that i get this as the total kinetic energy the answer would be i should observe the system from the center of mass of the system because in frame of center of mass vcm will become zero so this part becomes zero now we can also deduce that uh, the minimum kinetic energy of two particle system appears when we look at the system from the center of mass frame so because this part will become zero a pretty interesting result that that's what i want to highlight here coming back to this question and uh, coming back to this equation we, we need this equation to solve the question so kinetic energy of the system in the ground frame uh, can be written like this so this value is given to be 0 0.1 and this value we calculated to be 0 0.4 which means that the total kinetic energy that we have in the two blocks is 0 0.5 total energy that we have in the system is this total kinetic energy that we have in the block is this so where does the difference go the difference go as the energy stored in the spring and therefore we are getting this as the answer so this is how we get the two answers so i hope you enjoyed this question uh, i hope uh, you understood whatever i have explained uh, with that let's move to question for today's session so this is the question for today's session it is a comprehension it consists of three parts right now you are just looking at the paragraph of the comprehension the three questions will follow in the upcoming slides this is a question taken from pathfinder a very popular book pathfinder from that i have taken this question so if you want to just know the answers you can uh, check that book also but uh, i'll be expecting that you pause the video here and you attempt the question on your own okay so paragraph this is the first question again you can pause the video and you can take note of this question this is the second question that you have to solve you can pause the video attempt the question this is the third question that you have to solve okay 
with that uh, let me start solving the question in fact before i start solving the question uh, let me tell you the theory that we will be needing to solve this question and then we'll uh, talk about specifically this question so this question talks about a uniform inextensible rope of mass 2 kg and length 4 okay uh, the mass of the block is given the coefficient of friction is given and some other data is given so before we start talking about this uh, question specifically <coughs> let's consider a small segment of this string of length dn okay so if i draw this a small segment here what i notice is that at different points the tension should be different because in heavy rope we can expect this to vary and the inclination will also change so let the inclination here be theta let the inclination here be slightly different than theta let me call it as theta plus d theta and uh, so these are two forces acting on the element and there would be one force which is like dm into g okay so these are the three forces acting on the element the t the t plus dt and the dm into g now if i talk about the vertical equilibrium then uh, okay let me start with the horizontal equilibrium so if i talk about horizontal equilibrium i would be writing that t cos theta will be equal to t plus dt into cos of uh, cos theta plus d theta check this or in other words i can say that t cos theta is a constant so check this like okay or you can say that d of t cos theta is zero okay so all these three equations mean the same thing let me call this as equation number one so this is one of the concepts that you should remember in addressing such questions that in a heavy rope uh, the horizontal component of the tension at every point remains same okay i'll be using this particular equation in this question in a short while but let me first derive some equations that are general for similar scenarios this is one of them now let's talk about the vertical equilibrium if i talk about the vertical equilibrium what i would be writing is this t plus dt sine of theta plus d theta that's the vertical com vertical component of tension uh, this is equal to okay let me remove that yeah all right uh, is equals to the downward force would be t sine theta and plus dm into g so this can be written as d of t vertical check this d of t vertical is dm into g so this can be your second equation or another way to write this equation would be that delta t vertical delta of t vertical would be equal to mg so this is another way of writing the same equation okay the third equation the third equation that i am interested in can be obtained by writing equilibrium in the tangential direction okay so in tangential direction like if this is the element okay one force we have in this direction as t one force we have in this direction as t plus dt uh, we can ignore the slight change in angle here and then we will have one component of uh, dmg here and the other component in this direction okay so we can use the equilibrium of that also uh, to frame the equation so let me do that so uh, dt will be equal to dm into g into sine theta is the third equation that we are going to get or we can write this as delta t is equals to uh, dm sine theta can be written as lambda dl into sine theta into g and dl sine theta is dy okay so integration of dl sine theta will become delta y okay so delta t is equals to lambda g delta y this is the third equation this entire thing can be treated as the treated as the third equation so these are the three equations that can be very helpful in such questions now pertaining to this particular question pertaining to this particular question uh, a rope was like this there was a block here okay so what we can do what we can do we can write the tension here as t upper let's call this angle as alpha 
and let's call the tension here as T lower. So one of the equations was that delta T is equals to uh, lambda G into delta Y. This was the third equation. So in the present context, it becomes TU minus TL is equals to lambda, lambda. So the mass of the rope was given to be 2 kg. The length of the rope was given to be 4 meters. So lambda is 0.5. So 0 0.5 into 10 into delta y. Okay. So it becomes Tu minus Tl is equals to 5 into delta y is 2. Okay. Let me call this equation as A. Okay. When I'm using ABC, I'm you writing equations which are pertaining to the specific situation given in this question. Okay, so this becomes equation A. Then there was another equation that talked about the uh, horizontal tension remaining constant. So I can write TL is equals to TU cos alpha. Let me call this as equation B. And then there was a third equation uh, which can be written as Tu sin alpha minus 0 is equals to mg. So mg would be 20 here. So this is equation C. So in these three equations, we have three unknowns. The three equations, unknowns are Tu, Tl and alpha. So we can solve like from here on only mathematics remains. So I hope you all can finish the mathematics on doing that. You will get alpha as 53 degree. You will get T upper as 25 Newton and you will get T lower as 15 Newton. So from these three equations, we can solve to get these three value and that will solve the first question for you. Uh, the first question was uh, the value of alpha. Okay, the second question was the value of frictional force which will be equal to the horizontal tension TL. So TL was 15 Newton. So the second answer would be this. And the third answer or the third question talks about slightly different scenario in third part we have changed this value to something else such that the friction has attained the limiting value. Now limiting friction is mu mg which happens to be 0 0.5 into uh, the weight of the block which is 7.5 into g. So this becomes 75 by 2 Newton. Okay. So the TL becomes 75 by 2 Newton. Okay, so TL is known to us now. TU minus TL still remains 5 times of delta Y. So that is uh, another equation we have. And uh, we have one more equation which was what? Uh, TL is equals to TU cos alpha. Okay, so TL is equals to TU cos alpha. Okay, so again we have three equations. And uh, we have three unknowns. If I'm counting this as equation, I will count TL as unknown. So we have, uh, we don't know TL, TU, alpha and delta Y. In fact, we have got four unknowns for now. So we need one more equation. And I think I skipped one equation that was TU sine alpha is equals to MG, which is 20. So we now have four equation with us. Uh, we can treat TL as a known quantity. In that case, we just have to solve these three equations for three unknowns. Those three unknowns would be delta Y, alpha and TU. On solving, you will get the value of delta Y as one meter. Okay, I'm leaving the solving part to you guys because I'm pretty sure that you can do that. The calculations are also simple. They don't require any specific calculation or any specific mathematical skill. So I'm pretty sure that you can solve that. Uh, on that note guys, I will end the solution to this question. I hope you enjoyed this question. I hope you learned the three questions that I taught and you will remember it now uh, and you will be able to use it when the time comes. Uh, I'll show you the teaser for today's session guys. So this is the teaser for today's session. It is based on what I have taught in today's session. Again, it is a question from Pathfinder. So definitely you can find the answer in the book, but I'm not revealing the answer myself here. Now uh, you can send me your solutions and I'll comment on those solutions in my next session. So I'll meet you in the next session guys. Bye-bye. Take care and stay safe. Good night.